Hello, welcome to Fan Counters. My name's Nick. And I'm Elizabeth. And today we are just weeks away from the Super Bowl. Yay! Do you watch the Super Bowl? Um, sure. Let me rephrase that. Do you watch the Super Bowl commercials? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I knew that that's where that was going to go. <laughs> Uh, years past, I have not really paid attention to any of it, to be honest with you. And I don't ever usually watch football unless the Packers make the playoffs and then I might start watching. Yeah. But, uh, it's just not really my sport. Well, we, thank goodness, do not watch sports in our At house. All? No. Mm. Thank goodness. You know, with my husband doing sports medicine, he watches enough sports during the week that he doesn't feel that we need to watch him. Although he is a Bears fan and occasionally will catch a Bears game. Oh. But, um... I like to watch the Super Bowl. We tape it because sometimes I miss a commercial that is now the big hot topic of the next day, and Mm -hmm. I need to to go back and look at it. That is what YouTube is for. I understand. Oh, okay. Just just (laughs) checking. uh, But so I tape the game every year, and we typically have a very small party. It's usually like a couple of neighbors or sometimes it's the older couple that lives next door. Mm -hmm. And it's just really basic, you know, chili and hors d'oeuvre kinds of things. And the kids run around and play and, you know, it's not anything. We're not all sitting around. I have been to some parties when the Packers are in the playoffs and that's in the Super Bowl. That's a different story because then I think more people care. But for me, it's just really about the food and the commercials. Here we um, have a niece whose birthday falls usually either on Super Bowl Sunday or really right around. Mm-hmm. It's like February 4th is her birthday. I hope I didn't get that wrong. But anyway, so we always go to my uh, sister-in-law and brother-in-law's house and um, they have a nice party. So we do birthday before the game and then if you want to stay for the game, you can. Usually we just don't. <laughs> so It's about snacks. What I is it? It's about the food. And I love hors d'oeuvre parties. In fact, anytime I'm hosting a party, like our New Year's party, it was an appetizer party. You know, yeah. Everybody brings an appetizer. I love that. Mm, yeah, me too. Now I'm hungry. Shucks. So uh, before we get started on this week's show, just want to remind you we're looking for um, iTunes reviews. So please feel free to go to iTunes and give us a five-star review. Let us know how we're doing on the show. And certainly you can email us your feedback. If you email hello at fancounters.com, you can tell us uh, guests that maybe you want to see on the show. And we can uh, go to those people's reps and uh, try and get them on for you. Yeah. So if you have a suggestion, let us know. Now, uh, last year, feels weird to say that, yeah. uh, we interviewed Will Von Bolton, and he was a touring photographer for the band R5. And today we have the drummer from R5, Ellington Ratcliffe. Ellington joined the band just after they formed in 2009. R5 could be called a family band because it features siblings Rydell, Riker, Rocky and Ross Lynch. In 2012, they signed a deal with Hollywood Records and released their first album the next year. This past June, they released a five-track album, and we're going to talk about that on the show today. Coming to you from nowhere near the entertainment capital of the world, this is Fan Counters, the podcast. You're amazing. You need to come to Hollywood. I'm going to make you famous. There was this mob of people, and they're screaming my name. Crazy fans. Stop following me. Don't come around my house. If you do, the cops are going to be at yours. I think this guy wants to fight me. Ended up being a fan. There's just, like, security guards with, like, M16 holding, like, fans back. Are you kidding me? I continually will get stopped. Can I take a picture? We're going to, oh, my God. I definitely decline signing body parts. Oh, I don't want to go there. I'm the only one that's ever been on Sam Jackson and lived to tell about it. <laughs> that's why we call it Fan Counters. I don't think you're going to last on the air very yeah. long. It's great to have you on the show, All Ellington. Right. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. We talked a little bit in our intro about how the band R5 was formed. Sounds like you were friends with the Lynch family, and you, along with the three brothers and sister, started R5 in 2009. Can you tell us a little bit about how you met them? Because they were from Colorado, you were from L.A. How did that all work? Right. So, uh, yeah, I, uh, I grew up in L.A., and I was, you know, I was uh, born into the show business world with, you know, out of the womb with jazz hands, as I like to say, <laughs> you know, and... Uh, you know, like going on uh, like auditions and all, you know, doing the, the whole ruckus while like, you know, also trying to go to school and all that. And, uh, and, the, and then I went to this uh, performing arts studio in, uh, in uh, Northridge, California. Uh, and 
And then uh, the couple of years, you know, after, you know as uh, I was going there, they showed up from Colorado. And then I knew them for about a year. Um, and I and been during all this, I've I've been, you know, I was in all these middle school bands, you know, playing you know, alternative covers and strokes and white stripes, all that stuff. And then uh, and always then they, a drummer. They, uh, uh, no, I I was in one band where we would like switch. So I would like. I would drum for one song, and then I would sing for a song, and then I would go to keyboards. Like, we kind of rotate clockwise for, like, okay. every song. So I kind of had to practice with everything. But I think drumming was always my, you know, my go-to natural, you know, instrument. Um, guitar, if I had, like, stuck with it, I probably could have been a better guitarist. But drum, that was the other one. But, like, drumming was the, the main guy. But, um, but yeah, then they, uh, they, they knew that, and they came to a couple of my shows, and they are like, oh, cool and asked me if I wanted to jam with them. And so Rocky, Riker, and I jammed to, you know, the classics, uh, Smoke on the Water, and uh, I can't, like, you know, a couple Fall Out Boy songs, because, you know, they love Fall Out Boy. <laughs> and, uh, and they're like, oh, my God, this is awesome. We've never played with a real drummer before. And I was wow. like, well, you know, here I am. <laughs> You're, yeah, and then, I am. Uh, yeah, and then nine years later, <laughs> here I am talking to you guys. That's awesome. So yeah. uh, all of you were were about eighteen or nineteen when this happened. No, we uh, it, it it there's a pretty wide range uh, because they're all they're all like a year apart. Okay. Um, so I think Ross, uh, the youngest and the lead singer, was um, he was probably like I would say as young as like twelve, thirteen, fourteen. When oh we wow! Were like, wow! Okay. When, yeah, and I was I think I was like 16 maybe when we like cuz we started the 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 fair racket, you know, we were doing the OC fair and like pretty much like we like I think um their dad was just uh craigslisting people be like, "Hey, we got a band, we'll perform." <laughs> okay. You know, we're going to San Diego, just doing all the, you know, throwing everything in the van and heading down to wherever it would take us, you know, the the good, the bad, the ugly, the whole nine. And then um and then Riker booked uh, the bassist. He booked Glee uh, as a warbler, which uh, for Glee fans, that was like people love the warblers. Yes. Uh, I didn't watch Glee, but you know, I I, I witnessed it. Okay. And uh, and then and then after that, oh, so that was the first thing. Like we went to OC Fair. Riker was on Glee. He did the Glee tour, and then like 50 fans to 100 fans showed up, and we were like, whoa, <laughs> whoa, what the what this what is this? People are screaming. This I don't understand. And then, um, and then, and then that at the same time, Ross just found out he booked Austin and Allie on Disney Channel, and then that's kind of where things, you know, was took off, uh, you know, because you know Disney outlet that's you know yeah it's huge. And, and, not, we're, you know? and we're going to talk about yeah. that. We're going to go there, but first we want to just Wait. stay with your music for a little bit. Um, so did you yeah. all graduate from high school? Yeah, yeah. We uh, well, you know. Um, we they were homeschooled their uh, their whole life because okay. uh, just h- how they rocked and then um and then <laughs> and I went to high school up until like sophomore year and then I was like once once the band started kind of you know pretty much where I left off telling you guys like with the Austin and Alley stuff that's kind of where I like I I homeschooled the last two years of uh, of high school as well so we could you know travel and do things and you know we were going we were doing sorry to fly dates at that at that point. So yeah, we we all uh, graduated high school. So you, none of you went to college. No, we didn't go to college. I mean, you know, I'm thinking of, it's funny that you mentioned that because like for so long, my parents, all of our parents are in industry savvy. Okay. My parents were were uh, you know theater folk, and and they were like, you don't need college. Like just go learn it. You know, do your thing, work it, and if you want to go to college later, you can. But you you know, they weren't like forcing me to go to college and same thing on the other end you know because we all knew that we wanted to be entertainers right. and things of that nature um but actually what's funny is that i'm thinking about taking like just because there's a lot of business in the music business industry obviously the music yes business. and you know i want to like i want to just know what's what's going on i want to learn more and i think i think it's good it was good for me not to go like let's say if my life was different not to go straight to college but like now i'm interested in in learning things like i know what i want to learn about okay at 24 and so i'm like oh i might like go get a like a like a business degree at a community college just so i can like know what's going on and utilize 
you know, certain certain things. That's great. You know, I when I'm making take, decisions and, and meetings and whatnot. I think it takes normal people till about age 24 <laughs> to yeah. figure out where they want to do, what they actually want to do. And by then, they've already graduated college. Yep. And they're like, oh, I should have done this. Uh, so. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it took uh, three years before you would sign a record deal with Hollywood Records. Were you guys as a group right. ever worried that you'd be playing these county fairs forever? We just honestly, like, we were, we didn't think about anything. You know what I mean? We were just like, cool. Another, you know, we were like job to job type of people because we were all working actors at that time, you know, booking commercials and yada yada. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so we were just like, we were always just like, okay, we were always busy. So we didn't really have any time to think about, oh, well, what is this? Where is this going? And by the time, you know, it kind of took off, it was already like, oh, great. We were kind of just like writing whatever came. You know what I mean? Like if the band ended at whatever point, it'd be sad. But it's like, I did, definitely didn't think, I definitely wasn't thinking like, you know, worldwide tours at, uh, you know, 16. I was like, yeah, it's fun, cool. I'm going to like, you know, be an actor and, you know, maybe do some stuff like that. And then, you know, but yeah, the... Uh, it, it happened to go this way. <laughs> Do you remember where you were or what you were doing when you found out the the record label wanted to sign you guys? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, no, I don't remember okay. actually. But I know we we had a lot of kind of guys coming in and out, like managers, meetings, you know, in in the uh, Lynch's living room with like <laughs> we, we would kind of we, we would kind of play like for them on our really crappy amps and instruments we were probably really bad but more for people to see like potential okay. and like hear the story and like meet us but so there's a lot of that going on at that time i remember you know we almost kind of worked with these guys that kind of like uh started a couple um boy bands in uh in europe and then we almost went like this other direct like a big business direction and then uh and i think it was all in that kind of whirlwind but uh yeah it was the full deal we we went in we we Took pictures signing a contract and a whole nine. You know, I wonder, Ellington, with iTunes and YouTube being such major distribution outlets and certainly becoming more and more popular as uh, around the time you guys were signing this deal, did you ever think about maybe not signing the deal and doing all the promotion and marketing yourself? Um, we didn't think about it at the time. And obviously, I definitely wasn't. If, if they were thinking about it, I wasn't in the conversation. <laughs> okay. I was, a, I was a dumb 16-year-old, but... um. Yeah, I uh, I mean, in hindsight, it would have been interesting to see how that would have worked because it could either work really well or it could just or it could not work at know, all. At yeah. all. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because a lot of guys today are even, you know, in the in the rap game, like Post Malone was just uh, he was just putting stuff on SoundCloud. And now he's like the most successful 22 year old rapper, you know, and, and like Chance the Rapper, like all these guys are just doing it now. So it could have even be a little like could have been a little before its time back back then because you know it wasn't that i don't know who knows yeah. but um yeah who knows right yeah it was just a hypothetical yeah. but uh yeah yeah we definitely in hindsight we definitely look back and go hmm i wonder what pros and cons you know yeah. what, what, what there i think there would have been both honestly there would have been certain things we wouldn't have gotten to do like tours early or you know maybe like that like you can go to japan and go to australia but um you know yeah maybe we might have like Made more money in the end? Like, who knows? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, right. When we go to the R5 website, r5rocks.com, and look at mm. your tour schedule that you've been on the road literally all year. Not only did you tour the U.S. this year, but you've been to the U.K., Australia, Ireland, Germany, Italy, and all over Europe, and even some countries in South America. Talk to us about the yeah. schedule that you kept in 2017, and how do you keep from, A, knowing where you are when you wake up, and B, not being burned out. Well, this is our third, uh, I guess, like, uh, like worldwide tour, I guess you can consider it. Mm-hmm. Um, so at this point, we're kind of just like, here's Europe again. We know, like, we knew how it went. You know, the first time was, was you know, it's always exciting, but the first time was new, and it was like, whoa, I'm in another country. I'm, I'm drinking espresso in France. <laughs> what is going on? That's awesome. You know what I mean? And the mm-hmm. second time, like, you have, you're a little more comfortable. You kind of... You like know what's going on. Third time, you're just like, all right, I know the drill. I wake up, I get a, I get a croissant, and uh, you know what yeah. I mean. And I, I chill in my bus, and whatever. You know, we we are kind of professionals 
uh, as of now. But sure. um, I will say this this time has been the most relaxed because having been our third tour, or our third worldwide, you know, whatever, um, we we spread it out a little more. We kind of did a month of two months of touring in, in the U.S. and then we came back and chilled here for a month. You know, went back on the road to Europe came back for another month so it was it was definitely much easier than like a couple tours ago when we were just going you know from new york to south america like back home for a week back to australia back home like just you know we we, we kind of ran ourselves yeah uh, ragged, i get tired of thinking you know? about doing all that travel say, this is exhausting just <laughs> yeah. listening to that tour I, who set that tour up yeah. man <laughs> I, that's what i'm saying what the heck is going on here uh but no we we learned and it, it, you know it's all six and this depends on what you know promoters are giving you where where they want you all that business stuff so of the shows you did in 2017 do any of them stick out as your favorite one for one reason or another i wouldn't say favorite there's not there's not a number one there was definitely many that were really good like um uh like my i think honestly my favorite place to play uh, this is kind of a big deal to say my favorite place to play, but the, the most special show we ever have is usually in Argentina, mm-hmm. um, and it's because like there's just I don't know what what is up with Argentina, but <laughs> we are we we do well there, and we play you know we play an arena and it's packed and it's like it's just a it's just a moment of like wow this is this is what people dream of you know for their whole life. I just like I, every time I play Argentina, I just look at this like. 12,000 crowd and I just go holy crap like this is insane you know what I mean because then we'll go to we'll go to like a small town in in Sweden and play you know a really intimate show because we're building markets and all that uh so you know it's nice to go to some place and just live the rock you know live yeah. the dream for like for a show and then kind of go back to reality playing you know packed houses you know theaters all the good stuff and uh but yeah it's South America is definitely the spot to be. Manchester was amazing this year. Austria was amazing. There's just certain shows where, the, where there's an energy and you just feel it on both ends. You know, like um, like one of the craziest shows we ever played was in Tel Aviv, Israel. Really? Oh. Uh, for some, yeah, I know. <laughs> we went to Tel Aviv and um, they were just insane. It was people, I mean, this isn't like, it's just to give you an example, this isn't like we, we don't we don't want this to happen, but there was a lot of like like they're pulling girls out just every song and it was just packed and and sweaty and just loud. It was crazy. Hmm. In Tel Aviv of all places, you know. Yeah. What kind of security do you guys have to keep you safe? Are you relying on the local venues security people or do you have security traveling with you? It depends. In South America, I think we have the same guy in like a couple countries, and that might change. They'll set it up more because they're it's pretty crazy in South America. Tel Aviv, I don't think we were expecting what happened, you know, uh-huh. to us. So we were kind of blindsided by that. And then, in, um, you know, but yeah, it's 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 a local deal. We like we don't we don't we don't hire like we don't have a guy on the flight with us from America to South America necessarily. Like we we have local arrangements okay um depending on the market it'll be like more intense and you know if it's like a kind of a chiller i guess the promoter sets it up but um yeah it's uh it's definitely needed sometimes and it's definitely not needed in other places we kind of like we kind of like to laugh at at those who like have a security guard you know in (laughs) north america where like you know what i mean it's like oh the fans like oh hey and like oh here's my security guard but um, like these fans are mild compared to overseas yeah, they they don't they don't mess around. It's uh, but you know we love it and we do our best to keep everyone safe and us safe. <laughs> we got to uh, interview Will Von Bolton, one of your tour photographers, uh, in a previous episode. And if I'm right, if I'm awesome. if I'm remembering correctly, he mentioned Argentina as one of his wildest shows because that was where they started uh, like following your van and then you were doing an autograph signing and you came out and they had defaced the van with all their Twitter handles and all this other stuff. Uh, so that certainly sounds so like it, that's a crazy it, country to be in. Yeah. Well, that, that I remember that exact, um, that was like the, 
That was a signing we did. Yeah, was it Argentina? He said that was Argentina. Yeah, that's what uh, I thought he said. Yeah, we were supposed to do a signing at a mall, and the police called and we were like, "Yo, you guys, you guys can't come down here. It's, it's, it's too crazy." And then somehow, I don't know if we were just like, "Ah, you know, forget it. <laughs> Let's go," uh, I, or if it was like, "No, it's fine. I don't know. Uh-huh. I don't know what happened." But somehow we we win, and um, and it was it was like a it was like a war zone you know we get there and there's just like there's just a like a crowd of people and the van has to drive like into the crowd so people are just like scooting over for this giant sprinter van and then we're sitting we're like waiting they're they're trying to make like a uh um what's the word where you uh they're trying to make a path to get to where we need to go uh-huh. so the like, security guards just are just blocking people like linebackers hmm. and uh and and we, you know, we're sitting there. We're like, okay, do we go? Are we going to go? We're, we're in that moment of like, what's going to happen? The heat is like, you know, we're just all freaking out. And then the back of the van opens and fans try to, are starting to like, like run into the van and like climb into the van. We're like, go, 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 go. Oh my God. It, was like a, it was like a war zone. It was like, it was like, I always like to say it was like the cutest zombie apocalypse <laughs> that you could imagine. You know what I mean? They're just like, they're hungry. They're grabbing hair. They're going to bite you. You know, it's like, yep. it's just, it's, yeah, it's, it's, I can't stress enough how insane the vibe is. It's scary, but you know, it is love. So Absolutely. Not, it can't be that bad. So besides the crowd vibe, do you play uh-huh. a different show in, in the U S than you do say in Argentina or Australia or Ireland? Is it a different show? Or? Um, well, it's a different show in a way that, like, the set list would change because we kind of like the Bruce Frank scene it up a little bit where we're just like, hey, tonight we're going to play this song. Okay. All right, cool. You know, we're going to switch these guys around, you know, uh, which, which is fun for us and for, because we'll, we'll, you know, we kind of have a, like, a Grateful Dead following sometimes where, like, there'll be a group of 20 fans that come to, uh, like, 40 shows in a year. And mm, we're just wow. like, oh, my God, she's going to see the same set again. <laughs> so, like, and up like, next will be... change it for them. <laughs> yeah. What was that? I was going to say, and up next is this same song. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're like, I knew that was coming. <laughs> but, you know, we'll try to, um, we'll try to, like, throw in some audibles, too. I, I mean, I love it because, you know, playing the same set every night, I, I don't like. And I don't, think, I don't think anyone likes just doing... It's, it's like doing a yoga class where they do the same, you know... They do the same exercises in a row, and you're like, "Oh, we're only on exercise five. Great, you know, yeah. uh, we, you know what I mean." So it's like it's just an extra factor. Like whatever keeps it fresh for us, we'll keep it fresh for the fans, and then that'll help with the energy I was talking about of just like of a great show for whatever reason. Since you have such a busy touring schedule, and you're always playing in front of crowds and playing your music, do you guys get together to rehearse and, and practice very often, or is that not necessary anymore? Yeah, it's less necessary than it was. Um, if we have a new catalog, like with New Addictions, we had to kind of figure out how we were going to play those songs, you know, how to translate um, the record into into live performance. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it'll, it, you know, to, to figure it out, to figure out the songs is when it takes the most rehearsal time. But it'll be like a day or two. You know, maybe we'll go a full, like, eight hours. But... But that's not straight rehearsal either. That's a lot of like loading samples and a lot of like techno technological stuff, you know, figuring out right old synth pad, how to make it sound like the record, and oh, you know, okay. we'll take like three hours. You know, he's and he's just like Rocky, our guitar player, is like the brains. You know, he'll just like be whittling away at you know a certain sound, and then um, you know, it's a lot of that stuff. It's it's very DIY. Like we don't really have we don't have like a professional music director. We have. Our, our bass just kind of acts as our musical director, like just putting a set together and like figuring out the best flow, you know, and then like I'll come up with some ideas and we'll brainstorm. And, you know, like I, we have like Ross, Ross and I did like a tap drum call and answer. That was kind of cool. And, uh, you know, like just say things like that. We'll just brainstorm and play with stuff and, you know, make our cr- crew, like make our crew's head hurt by like trying to <laughs> solve you know, uh, we need a tap board right now. We're like, ah. you know. Uh, Where but, are you rehearsing? Yeah, we rehearse. At, I mean, you know, any rehearsal studio in LA that works. There's like two primarily that we go to. Um, but yeah, was, I uh, back in the day, we used to rehearse all the time just in our living room. You know, and even um, 
we actually just uh, we last year we lived in a, a house together, and uh, you know just to save on some money, we uh, we rehearsed in we used to have jam nights in our we had a, like a pretty large uh, like living room area, mm-hmm. so we would you know have the drum set up, the man set up, so we would just you know we were like oh it's already set up, let's just you know figure out some stuff here and save save some rehearsal studio money because sure. uh, it, it can get expensive. Hmm. So it looks yeah. like you guys are fairly fan accessible as concert goers are able to purchase meet and greet packages. And that must be something you guys like to do or obviously you wouldn't offer them. So tell us, tell us mm. what your fans tell you during the meet and greets. Well, you know, it's funny. Like a lot of the fans that go to the meet and greet are, are those uh, Grateful Dead, quote unquote, <laughs> style fans. You know, we're like, oh, hey, what's up again, Ashley? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh, how did you like last night's show? Did you like that one part? I was like, oh my god, I loved it. But uh, you know, there'd be certain parts where you know our fans are very thankful for us, and they are very expressive of their thankfulness. Um, so they'll like, you know, they'll tell us these like stories of how we like, you know, saved their lives, and how if it wasn't for us, you know, they might not be. You know where they are now, and I'm just like, you know, that's that's when it gets really deep, and you're just like, you're kind of shell shocked for like 30 seconds, like holy crap, like yeah. that's, that's a lot to that's a lot to chew on. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? Because we're just doing what we do, and we're just being ourselves. You know, I, so the fact that like it's a, on a whole other level for some people is like, uh, it's like wow, I was just I was just messing around. I wasn't even, you know, it's like I was just having fun and like. And that, that that was that meant something to someone else, you know, um, you know, maybe even halfway across the world. It's just just crazy how we live in this era where you know people can watch you on YouTube and just totally immerse themselves in your life, and you might not even know who they are, you know. Um, so it was a lot of that, and uh, yeah, it's nice. It's nice to be able to like you know see our friend fans and our fans and. You know, we've actually become became a good like pretty good friends with a couple of our fans over the years. Like, well, like we have some fans in New York that we'll go and hang out with because like they like they like cro- they like made it. They crossed the border into wow. friends. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. That's yeah, nice. it happens. What kind of crazy or weird, maybe some fun encounters have you had with your fans? I mean, there's a couple there's a couple stories we have uh, that kind of circulate. You know, and we have like. Uh, our main demographic is like teenage girls. We have a couple of younger girls that are Austin and Alley fans, and with that come their moms. Oh, now, okay. Yeah. So, what's crazy is that a fan is a fan's mom because they don't care. They're like, "I'm gonna ask whatever you want, and I'm gonna get it for you." You know, talking to their daughter. Mm-hmm. So we've had a couple like mo- like more mom experiences that were really crazy, ra- like than fan experiences. Like for instance. Uh, we were playing a fair, you know, kind of around the first album, uh, in, you know, uh, like middle, uh, sorry, uh, uh, on the East coast somewhere. Can't remember. And, okay. um, after the show, we used to do these signings to like sell more, you know, EPs and mm-hmm. we'd like sign stuff and yada, yada. And so one, d- one day, uh, this mom comes up to Ross and goes, give me your gum. What? Like, uh, <laughs> he's like, excuse me. And he's like, get, I, like, give me your gum. I, I want, give me your gum. And like, like, really, like out of nowhere, you know, just, just like yeah, aggressive. And we were like, we were like, uh, no, we're not, we're not gonna do that. And then like, you know, our managers had to come in, like, oh, sorry, yeah, just, no, we're not gonna do that. Uh, thank, you know, and, and it's like, it's like a, kind of a crazy free for all. So like, if someone gets like. Oh no, thank you. Like it's kind of it's not awkward. Like people are coming in next to like get their stuff signed. So, but that was weird. That is <laughs> weird. Like what the heck? I don't want anybody's yeah, that gum. Was weird. Yeah, no, no gum. Like what? What do you want with my gum? That's weird. Uh, and maybe it was like maybe they had like a scientist like husband that could you know do something with like the yeah the, they're gonna the, clone the saliva you. and yeah I, yeah Ugh. clone yeah yeah um one fan gave us a goldfish. <laughs> we were like, I don't know, what, we're on a bus, we can't, have, we can't keep this goldfish. Uh, and then, okay, this next story I, I'm going to tell with, uh, just, I don't know, it's kind of, uh, here we go. All right, come on. We're in Chicago. Down. I'm going to tell you the story. It's, it's, it's 
going to sound crazy, but uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a theme to it. So, okay. uh, we're in Chicago. I, I, my, my grandma lives in Wisconsin, so she came down. We went to dinner, and we came back around, like, 3 a.m. Uh, and there's these fans outside still, and we're like, what? What are you, like, it's 3 a.m. What, what are you guys doing? We're, I don't want you guys to be, you know, staying out of our, you know, standing outside for five hours waiting for us. That sucks, you know, right. for, for you guys. Um, and so anyway, but, you know, they do it. That's just what they do. They like it. I don't know. Uh, so this one girl comes up to, uh, to, uh, I guess, Riker and Riker just came, uh, yeah, anyway, yeah, she came up to Riker and he said, Riker, have you ever seen a 14 year old with a tattoo? And he was like, no, I haven't. Um, and you know, he was thinking it would be like, you know, his mom, her mom, like, let her get a tattoo, like, signed off on it. Like, oh, I got, you know, a Hello Kitty tattoo, ha Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so she proceeds to put, take her finger into her eye, and she pulls her eye out. <gasps> and, what? <laughs> and she turns it around, and she had, like, a, uh, what's, the, what's the hockey team in Chicago? The, the uh, Blackhawks. Black oh, Black she had a Blackhawks tattoo on the back of her eyeball. And he was like, whoa, whoa, that's cool. Like trying to keep it together, you know, on the inside. Uh, and she like, wow. and, she, and she did it like multiple times throughout the day. Or not throughout the day. Like, like, so Riker came out, he came in and was like, oh my God, I got to tell you what just happened. <laughs> and then like, you know, and then the other brothers came in from wherever they were and same thing happened. They were like, yo, did you see? Oh my, oh God, my gosh. So, so I missed it. I go outside and she's like, Hey Ellington, have you seen a, a 14 year old with a with a tattoo? And I'm like, no, but I I, he- I heard about it. Oh uh, God, I'm I, like I wasn't ready for it. And then she ended up she didn't do it for me, so I didn't have to go through the, uh, the oh. shock and awe. But so here comes the silver lining. She was like, she was kind of like the whole time. She was like, you know, you know, when you have a glass eyeball, you know, it's got to, you know, you got to be comfortable with it you know she was like very comfortable with the fact that she has this fake eye and then she said she would do things like she would take your eyeball out and like place it on like someone's hand and said i got my and would say i got my eye on you oh. Oh. I, was like, <laughs> I was like wow you are like i have to like okay on the reality of the situation it's a little strange it's a little crazy but on the other side of the situation i applaud her for being so comfortable with something that, you know, most people, like a lot of people would, would have a hard time with. Yeah. Sure. So that's why, I t- you know, I always have like reservations about telling the story because it's, it's, I feel bad, but like at the same time, she's like probably the most confident girl I've ever met in that regard. Because if I had a glass eyeball, I don't know if I could do what she did. You know, I have to tell you from, um, from doing this show for a while, that is by far our strangest fan counter. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> you get to win that one for sure. <laughs> That's awesome! Yeah, Thank you, I, Chicago. I, I don't expect anyone to top that. Um, <laughs> awesome. So fans really do get an insight thanks to all of you on your YouTube channel. Um, yeah. You document your travels. You bring them into your hotel rooms. Uh, the whole bit. <laughs> so, are you guys right. afraid of showing too much? They're loose. They're pretty loosely edited, honestly. I mean, the only things we edit out are just things. Yeah, like we'll set to ourselves, but barely, you know. And uh, I don't know, you know, with Instagram and and all the social media stuff, there's so much more information about people than there was ten years ago or twenty years ago. You know, when I was a child, like no one, no celebrities were tweeting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you know, I. I don't think there's there's nothing to hide, so I don't I don't have any reservations about uh, you know sharing you know and and fans know us so well already. It's like it's just like it, that's not even really an issue um, because we used to have back in the early days, you know, with the fairs, we used to have uh, uh, R5 TV, and it was you know. It was silly. We were young teenagers. Like, we're going to the movies. We're getting yogurt. We're yeah. going to the beach. <laughs> like, that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, before we were touring. And then we had 
you know, video videographers come with us on tour and document like the first time we went to Europe and all that stuff, which was great. It was professional. It was awesome. And then we were like, oh, you know, the fans are like, oh, man, like they were kind of missing it for a while. So we kind of did it for the fans. And we were like, let's just do it ourselves. Like we didn't need, you know, write all edits on Final Cut and uh, she used to do all our music videos and stuff like that. So back in the, you know, way, mm-hmm. way back in the day. So yeah, we're like, this is, you know, we're, we're learning to like do more things in house and not ask for, not pay for other people because it's like, I can do it, it you know, I can do exactly what I want to do without having to like, you know, yeah. bring in a, an editor or anything, you know? So, um, so yeah, that's kind of why we did that. Well, I think uh, it's awesome because and, yeah. uh, a lot of artists live stream and that kind of thing. And I really applaud it. Even we just talked with an artist who's like, you know, my son gets on me because I should take a shower before I do it. And we're like, no, you know, we, we want to see the real you. If you're promoting an album, yeah, be yeah. professional. But if you're just in your house and you're, you're chatting with us, chat like you normally are. Right. Yeah. And, and I feel like, uh, like when I go to shows, I, sometimes I may not like someone's music, but I will like them. Sure. Like if they talk in between and I get to know them and they're hilarious, or any you know any of those things. I'm like, yeah, I don't like your music, but I like I will. Fo- I'm a fan of you because of who you are, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's definitely a, a valid thing to think about. Mm-hmm. So as we broaden our podcast exposure to fan in the United States, you've been able to have a fan base that's worldwide. In fact, this mm. month in January, you are playing Japan. I think every yeah. musician wants to know, how do you create a worldwide fan base? Uh, it was just, uh, I mean, yeah, it's just social media. I mean, that's the, simple, that's the simple answer. Back in the day, we were just tweeting. And, you know, I think Riker went over to London with his Glee tour. You know, we had kind of early on little dips into worldwide stuff. You know, I mean, I mean from the beginning, there was like Turkish fans and 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 fans from Chile and like, or Chile or however you say it. But, uh, you know what I mean? Like it was just a very, like right at the beginning. So, you know, I think it's, it it is a hat, you know, it it tips a hat to social media. You know, if someone's starting out, be active on Twitter and people will find you because they just, that was just, it was just as, as thoughtless as that. We were just on Twitter. We all got that, those accounts. We were on YouTube doing this, the, you know, edited videos and whatnot. And we, you know, it just, be, they just found us and I don't know how they found us. And then Disney helped probably with the exposure and then, and then that led us to tour and build markets, but that's the long run. Nice. But yeah, short run was just social media. It's crazy. It is. It, I mean, stuff can go viral that you're like, why is this a thing? But right. yeah. <laughs> right. So let's talk yeah, about yeah, your, a lot of those. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about your new music. It's an album called New Addictions. It's got five tracks. Yep. And it includes a cover of NXS's classic Need You Tonight. Uh, I love mm. that some of the songs were inspired by real events, like the song Lay Your Head Down. Uh, can you tell us the story mm. of Rocky and the Polish Models encounter in Japan that led <laughs> to you guys creating that yeah, song? Well, yeah. I uh, I mean, that's pretty much it. You know, they had, like, I, I won't go too much into detail, but they... They they had they met we, we we always go to the same spot in Japan we made these friends early on like the first time and they always bring bands to this club and so with this club there's a there's a large modeling uh, presence in in Tokyo or, or you know these people know these, so they'll bring these models to chill with the band and you know and so Rocky just hit it off with this one girl and they like you know they like had a very special like experience you know they like they like were walking along the water at like five in the morning they just like talked all night it was mm-hmm. this crazy like whoa and rocky was leaving the next day kind of thing so it was a very like romantic you know like romeo and juliet star cross situation yeah. and then they kept in touch and i think their first date they both went to uh i think they went to like Korea, like, or something. Wow. Yeah, or, yeah, because it was like, there's, there's situations with, like, visas and all that. It was a very complicated logistical nightmare. So they could only meet in, like, very, uh, what's the word? Very, um, 
They can only meet in very romantic locations. <laughs> okay. Yeah, very exotic locations. Right. So, yeah, that's pretty much that yeah. story. Okay. And he, you know, he, he like, I, I remember hearing Lay Your Head Down. I was setting up my drums in the garage, and our studio was kind of on the other side of the garage, so we shared a wall. And I remember hearing this song, and I was like, oh, that's pretty sick. And, uh, and then Rocky, like, it was like 4 o'clock, uh, it was like 4 in the afternoon, and I think 8 in the morning, I think he said he was up till 5 in the morning writing that, like finishing that song. Wow. Because, mm. you know, he just kind of, he, he kind of got, you know how you get into like a flow state and you're just like, you're just working, you don't even care what time it is, you're not eating because you don't care because you're so invested in yeah. whatever you're doing. That's what happened to him. He, he like, he like was dirty and smells and I was like, bro. <laughs> What did you? What happened to you last night? And he just, yeah, he said he just got fully invested, and I think he finished finished most of the song, and then, you know, and then we ended up deciding, yeah, you you should, because we were thinking maybe Ross would sing it, because you know, obviously he's the lead singer, but we we're like, you know, you have to sing it; it's your song. So the song yeah. "If" is about falling yeah. in love on Instagram. Do you believe in love <laughs> in first sight? Um, we have. Well, I mean. Literally, we're writing this song. We have the we have the music. We have some melodies. We're, but we don't really know where we're gonna go with it. And we uh, we found this girl on Instagram. She's a musician, and she has this really awesome EP. I think it was I don't remember her name, but I think it was like I saw it on like the top forty uh, EPs of 2017 or something like that. Uh-huh. She was on it, so it, I think it got some it got some notability. And then we like kind of you know we're like oh wow this music is amazing. You know, uh, and then and then we went to her Instagram, and we were and and we were like, whoa, wow, like that's whoa, <laughs> oh okay, and and we all kind of had this like moment of like, wow, this girl's like, who is this person? Like, oh my god, we're you know had that, yeah, that like falling in love. You know, I was gonna say your wows must mean moment. she was beautiful. Yeah, beautiful and and interesting, and you know, we we heard her music first. We were like, oh, and she like does really cool music, and oh whoa. whoa we're, who is this girl? Yeah. Um, so we were like, well, then, you know, let's like, this, this is what the song is about. Let's, let's talk about this social media age that we live in and how, you know, and the experience of like, of what we just experienced, you know? So, and then it was like, bam, done. We wrote Got a song. The, that day, the next day, and we kind of tweaked some things. And yeah, it was one of those kind of like writer's block situations where we, we kind of sat on it for a couple of weeks. We we're like, man, what? Where are we going with this thing? You know, kind of evolved and went left, went right, that kind of thing. You were in this group with four siblings, and you do a lot of the songwriting with Rocky and Ross. Did you mm-hmm. feel early on like you were constantly maybe feeling outvoted on things, or were you guys a cohesive group from the start? Uh, we are cohesive because we are all very different, um, which just sounds really weird. But well, we kind of had this this uh this uh thought that you know a lot of bands come together because they have so many similar interests we came together because well they're all family right and i am whatever you know but so in in that regard they all have completely different interests or or tastes i guess we should say like Riker loves pop music you know what i mean he that's all that's that's his bread and butter he loves pop music rocky ross and i we more like you know rap alternative uh things that are a little more have a little more depth to it um more rolling stone rydell loves like punk rock <laughs> so we're like we're like these like this weird collection of music tastes trying to like you know make it into make make decisions and things like that so um yeah it's just uh when it comes to that uh, sorry, what was the question? <laughs> well, I, was, I was just wondering if you ever were, were feeling like it. you were the odd man out. In that regard, you know, I kind of shared tastes with uh, with Rocky and Ross. So, okay. you know, um, it, I never felt like it was pretty evenly matched. There was always like a it was always like a three on two. So like the the three would win, and the two would be like, "Well, okay, I trust you guys." You know, like it's right. it's, it's uneven. Okay. So I think, you know, we always had the best outcomes because, you know, we trust each other, et cetera. So it's widely publicized that you are dating Rydell Lynch, who is also also in R5 (laughs) with you. 
So <laughs> you're true. touring with her and her brothers. Now, right. I don't have any brothers, but I'm pretty sure okay. that I would not like to be dating anyone in front of my brothers, let alone on the road. So how difficult it was the conversation with her brothers and your to announce that you two were dating? Uh, well, I will tell you the story. So we were playing in St. Louis, and it was a really hot show. And Rydell has never had a boyfriend because she was, you know, who would who would be crazy enough to, yeah. to, uh, you know, go for that because there's so many brothers, tall, six foot brothers. Uh, so I just gotten out of like a long term relationship, and um, and we had always had, uh, you know, we'd always been, you know, attracted to each other. You know, she she told me a long time ago that she likes me and i was like i can't i'm in the relationship five years later you know the whole thing so she came up to me after in front of all her brothers and was like and was like can you just kiss me like i just i don't i don't care i don't want like i don't we don't like i just want my first she hadn't had a first kiss she's like i just want my first kiss like i don't just just kiss me kiss me right now in front of all her brothers and everyone was like oh my god let me get the camera thinking it's like you know it's just a joke it's like a funny little thing if they like oh my god they're gonna kiss what um and then that night we had to take we had to take um we had to take a private jet which we don't do that's not a thing we do but we had to take a private jet to get to good morning america because um because otherwise we wouldn't have made it okay from because of the schedule and so so we we were like oh my god a private jet so we're like this is our first time we're freaking out we're like Grabbing all the sodas and snacks, you know, <laughs> hot off the, uh, we're like, yeah, we're like, we're like, you know, playing with the chairs, and uh, and you know, that was like one other thing of like, Bradella and I were kind of looking at each other in this glorious private jet on our way to do uh, Good Morning America for the first time. You know, we like, we like land and like we heard Oprah was right in front of us and just left to go somewhere, and it was just kind of this like magical evening of just of craziness, and then. And then uh, we were heading in the Sprinter towards the city. We, you know, we get into the city, all the city lights. It's very romantic. Ariel and I are kind of like sneaking handholds and things like that. Uh, then the next day we had all this press, and it was just like, oh, crap, this is happening. And then we had our first kiss in New York. And then, uh, and then we were like, oh, what are we going to do? And we started kind of like, we were trying to hide it from everyone. And then the next week we go back to L.A. and... Uh, we were holding hands like we were we were at the beach in a bonfire situation and we were <laughs> we were holding hands under a blanket and i think <laughs> ross was sitting in front of us and looked back for some reason and saw us and he literally just wide-eyed jaw dropped started going oh oh my you know freaking out and just <laughs> ran down the beach just, like literally right sprinted down the beach you know and then slowly but surely he started exploding things were going people were like Oh my God! Everyone was just very verbally freaking out. In, in a good way, way or no? You know, not like a in, a in a good way, in an excited way. And like they, I think they even tackled me. Like, let's get this guy because you know <laughs> they're funny and they're like, they're like, let's beat him up. Um, so that was like that was how we came out about our relationship. It was very, uh, it was very explosive. And, and so, so, how long then, have you been dating? We've been dating for. Uh, I think four years now. So this is pretty I much of a I, normal I, routine when the five of you go on the road. Oh, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just not, it it's was, a non-issue. Yeah, exactly. At, fr- at first, like, some of them were like, whoa, like, like us kissing in front of them. And, and right now a Leo, so she's very, like, uh, which I think is like the lion or something like that. Anyway, she's very, like, aggressive and, like, doesn't <laughs> care about the people around here. So, it's, like, she'll do things, like, crazy stuff in front of her brothers and, like, like, they're like, right, I'll stop, please stop, please stop. You know, so just like tackle me and like yeah, all that stuff. So, um, so yeah, at first it was weird, but then they got like, they got so used to it that it didn't really, didn't phase them anymore. And now four years later, it's all good. Okay. I'm glad you shared that. I'm sure the yeah. fans are going to enjoy that one. Yeah. That's a good story. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure some of them have heard it before, but you know, it's all well, good. 
Well, you mentioned before the acting, that not only are you a musician, you you really started as an actor. So growing up in L.A., yeah. you, you had the opportunity to act at a very early age. In fact, um, back in 2001, you had a role in a drama called All You Need. I was guessing, based oh, okay. on your current age, you were about eight years old. Is that right? <laughs> Something like that, yeah. yeah. So what do you remember about auditioning for that role? And do you remember what it was like to be on set for the first time? I remember nothing about that audition. I think it wasn't, it's not like it wasn't a, like a, a crazy part, but, um, so I think it was more just like a, oh, hey, he can like kind of act and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, they just, I think they needed more looks and things like that. So, but I, it was the most fun I've ever had because, you know, we were the kids that were like running around, you know, like, okay, you guys are going to take your cookies and you're going to run past the camera this way and like, so it was just like, this is the best thing ever. So I, I think at that young of an age, um, uh, it was just like, a, it, was a, it was a really cool intro, you know, to like set life. And, uh, and I think like I was really overwhelmed one day with, uh, with homework for some reason. I was like, a, I don't know, first grader. I was already mm-hmm. overwhelmed. I wasn't very good at school, I guess. Um, but uh, the, the lead in that movie, I forget her name, but she was kind of a big deal. She was like on, the, on like a ER or something like that. And um, she, she like came over to me and like consoled me and, and gave me a whole, you know, like a whole lesson in life of like how, of like just, I don't know. I don't remember what she said, but it was like so sweet of this, of this lead in this movie to come up to this kid who was, you know, might have been overwhelmed or something and like comforted me. So I was like, that was a cool lesson to learn, you know, like to have uh, selfless, selflessness and, and care for people even, you know, in all situations, you know, it's kind of cool. Now, your music career has given you an, really some amazing TV appearances that a lot of musicians and even actors would just dream of. Um, <laughs> during one show, uh, Elizabeth and I were talk- telling a story about Oprah or whatever, and I thought, I said, it was my dream to be on Oprah's show just to be interviewed about something. But you guys have been on uh-huh. Ellen, Jimmy Kimmel, live oh, with yeah. Kelly, several times on Good Morning America. So how special yeah. are these kind of experiences for you? I love them. I mean, I, I, uh, it's such an adrenaline rush because, you know, everything has to go right. Nothing can break down. You know, I'm the drummer, so I'm like, I'm kind of like counting it off. Like they're always looking at me, like, all right, I'm gonna point to you, five, four, three, two, and they'll give you, the, and it's just like, it's just so live and there and crazy, you know. And it's also a lot of times four in the morning because of Good Morning America, or not with anything else, I guess. It's just Good Morning America, but um, mm-hmm. yeah, I I love the adrenaline rush I get from those, and and especially Jimmy Kimmel. That was like our first uh, late night uh, experience. That was just so, it was just so exciting, you know? Um, so, yeah, I love, I love doing that. And, like, Michael and Kelly was cool. Like, Michael was really nice. He was like, man, I always want to play, you know, drums, but, he, like, my, my, his hands got messed up from football. So right. he couldn't, like, he couldn't, like, you know, hold piano keys very well or, you know. So, like, it was just, it was just like, it was just cool to, like, interact with these people that you are, like, are, like, TV gods, you yeah. know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, I just wondered, yeah. do these shows, do they call you for appearances, or are you submitting yourself for an appearance? I, I never knew how that worked. That's a great question. Uh, we just, I think it's like a, I think it's like our label has certain relationships with different, you know, with like ABC, so we can kind of build like, be like, oh yeah, uh, you know, our, our, I think it's all in the business, you know. It's yeah, like, it's probably it's like the our, label. Our, yeah, our PR, like, reaches out and, like, oh, yeah, we'll have you guys on this day. We have a new EP out. Oh, my God, we're going to have you guys. Blah, blah, blah. So that's all, that's all beyond our, <laughs> our, uh, my expertise. But I, I would imagine it would be something in that realm. You were told where to be and when to that's be right. there and what to wear, and you're good to go. I do what I'm told. <laughs> exactly. Actually, not even what to wear. I have to, like, be like, okay, do I want to wear this for Good Morning America or do I want to uh, put on my polka dot shirt that I love, you know? I'm sure Rydell so. has some say in that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, she's, she's, she's pretty fashion forward. <laughs> so we tape our show in Milwaukee where Jeffrey Dahmer. You're in Sir, Milwaukee. We are in Milwaukee. It's, it's a whole eight degrees here oh, today. Oh, how you doing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hello there. Yeah. <laughs> so we taped the show in Milwaukee where Jeffrey Dahmer's serial killings, it's still always on our minds. The horrific tragedy in Dahmer's early days are being featured in a movie called My Friend Dahmer. And your bandmate, hmm. Ross Lynch, 
is going to play <laughs> Jeffrey Dahmer, and it's scary that he kind of looks like him. What do you know about this upcoming yeah. movie? I've actually seen it like twice now. Um, it, it's actually yeah, it's uh, it's it's in select theaters now for those who are brave enough to see Ross uh, portray you know Jeffrey Dahmer. But uh, it's it's you know. It's a movie about his childhood because it's based off of My Friend Dahmer, which is uh, a comic book written by his school friend. Um, so uh, I forget his name, Dirk something. And uh, he, so yeah, it's based on this comic book. So it's, it's more about his high school years and his family and his background. So there, there's no, there, you know, I, I won't give too much away, but it, it goes all the way up to his uh, first victim. Okay. So it's it's not you know it's so it's, it's not going to scare a, me. It's more of a it's more of a coming of age movie than than a than a horror film. Okay, you know. Are it's, they going to do more? Strange. I don't think so. I think it. I think this is their their what they wanted to portray, and they did it. And you know, the director and the creator of the comic book like said what they wanted to say, and I think I think it's uh, it's on from there. But um. But yeah, he, I, I, uh, you know, he's been doing all of the uh, the award show stuff in LA, so it's, it's been uh, exciting. It looks really good. I have to say, the trailer makes me want to see it, and I, I probably yeah, will. Yeah, yeah. It hasn't. I've been watching it, out. It hasn't played around here yet. I'm pretty sure it did some film festivals and that kind of thing. But yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it, it ran the festival racket, and then uh, yeah, I'm sure it'll be available soon enough for you know home watching but yeah it's definitely worth a wa- it's definitely worth watching it's it's a very interesting story because you kind of empathize with with a serial killer and it's like wait what that's especially you guys living in milwaukee it would be yeah it'd be crazy yeah. okay so it's 2018 uh do you yeah. believe in new year's resolutions and did you make any um it's funny <laughs> this year i uh i've been really active in and goal setting and things like that. So I kind of do it all year round now. You know, I make I make lists. I, I do I I have my, my notes are full of of, of things that I, I wanna do things I wanna do in the future, things I wanna do with my family, things like all of this stuff. I have I have a list of uh of like goals on my bathroom mirror that I look at every day. So at this rate, I don't really make uh, resolutions anymore. Last year I did. It was always the same. Like, you know, get better at piano, work out more. You know, okay. <laughs> then it's like, okay, you know, like let's, let's now, you know, I, I've been listening to a lot of, uh, you know, podcasts uh, now that we're on a podcast. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and it's all, you know, like the Tim Ferriss and the Dave Asprey, all those guys, they're always about like, you know, they bring all these guys that are very successful, you know, anyone from poker players to, scientists and you know they all have these similar things where they have these goal settings so you know i've been doing a little more of that and uh, a little less of the uh of the uh of the resolutions although i'm still trying to learn piano that's yeah. that's i, I want to get that down Fair someday enough. well we know you're headed to japan in just a few days uh for that part yeah. of the the tour but i don't see any other dates after that what does r5 have planned for the new year Ooh, that's a great question. There's, there's definitely things to come. Okay. Um, I can't say much, but keep an eye out because something's coming very soon. Ooh. Uh, mm-hmm. So I can't, I can't, I cannot say anything. I literally, that's all I can say. I am not at liberty but, to tell um, you. I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would love to give more hints. I'm trying to think, like, where, how can I skew these hints? But, um, <laughs> yeah, just. Keep a careful eye out. That's all I have to all say. All right. Well, Milwaukee would love to yeah. see R5 come. Yes. And oh, yeah. If I love you Milwaukee. do, you will have to let us I know do. so we can do another live show with all of you. Yes. Okay. So, uh, Ellington, where can we find you on social media? Where can we follow you? Ooh, um, I'm actually in the process of changing my social media. Uh, if I'm not sure if it's done yet, but it might be Ratliff R5 across all. Or it might be Ellington. I'm not sure what what happened yet, but uh, if it's if it's pushed over, but it's going to be one of those two. So check uh check it check it out. Fair enough, and I'm sure you can find the link at r5rocks.com, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You, yeah, it's, it's, it'll take you know 
a very quick Google search to figure out which one is exactly the one. Well, right now. We are going to be stalking your webpage now to find out what this yeah, news is. You I have me to really know what curious. The big secret is. <laughs> it's coming out very soon. Yay! All Yay. right. Uh, well, Ellington, thank you so much for spending your time with us. We've really enjoyed this time with you. Yeah, I've enjoyed this time as well. It was a pleasure. Our thanks to Ellington Ratcliffe for joining us today. That was a good interview. It was a good interview. And what you, a little charmer he is. He is. You know, and um, he, it just goes to prove when he mentioned that they were on the private plane and they're taking all the snacks and the drinks and stuff, they're regular people just like us. Oh, right. Yes. I mean, like, you, they say free stuff, they're going to they're gonna take it just like we will. And as soon as he started saying that, all I could picture was, like, the first time people ever get in a limo and they're, like, completely taking everything out of there. <laughs> it was just a limo in the sky. That's I just awesome. think it's cute. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us on this uh, episode of Fan Counters. I hope you learned uh, a little bit about the band R5, and we can't wait to find out what that announcement is. I know. I don't like secrets. But, hey, we put the, the Milwaukee plug in there, so maybe he'll come and they'll all join us on the show again. That would be great. Yeah. Uh, for more uh, information on us, you can go to facebook.com forward slash fan counters, like our page, and communicate with us there. Uh, we love to hear from our fans, and um, we'd love for you, yes, you, to uh, write us. You can also email hello at fancounters.com. And, uh, of course, we're taking iTunes reviews. We we're, yes, we're keep plugging that because uh, it helps our, our number and uh, gets our exposure out there. So That's right. You can share our, our stuff, too. That yes, would be helpful. That would be delightful. Anyway, uh, another great guest next week, so make sure you tune in. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.